to the vlog. A bit of a different one today. It kind of dawned on me not long ago that bike pricing has just gone stupid. And now I'm not sure if this is just a New Zealand thing, because literally the price of everything is stupid in New Zealand, or if this is a global thing. Prices in New Zealand have skyrocketed on everything. Everything in the supermarket costs $9. Whether you want light bread, cheese, eggs, everything's $9. And bike pricing has gone bananas too. Now the reason I was looking at this is because just before I went to the tour of Samoa, I was organizing travel insurance for myself for racing for my bike. And they needed to know the value of my bike. And I thought, I'll look up the replacement value. When I bought my Propel, which I think was in late 2018 or maybe 2019, uh, it was somewhere in the $7,000 range. I might've got a few hundred off. And so I just wanted to check what are they worth now? Because if something happened to it and I have to replace it, how much is it gonna cost me? And I wanna make sure I insured it for the replacement value. And I was lucky I did, because if I got the same amount back now that I had paid for that Propel, I probably wouldn't have been able to get anything decent at all. And so it sort of sent me down this rat hole of looking at bike pricing in New Zealand and just amazed by the prices and are we getting fleeced or is this a worldwide thing so if you're outside of New Zealand and you're watching this please drop a comment and, and let me know what it's like where you live because I haven't looked at pricing all over the world but I'm just amazed at some of the prices now I want to be really clear my Propel although it's a I think a 2019 model it's a solid bike I've ridden on it so much, done thousands and thousands of kilometers, raced on it heaps, won some races. It's been a great bike. And I'm not specifically looking to upgrade because there might be a few things on your bikes that are a bit faster than the Propel, but the biggest thing that's stopping the Propel from going faster is me. If you put a faster, fitter, better cyclist on that bike, it would be quicker. It is not the bike that is preventing me from going super, super fast. So where I started with this was looking at the current Propel. So I've got here the Giant Propel Advanced Pro 1, which is pretty much the same spec as the Propel I have now, although it's got SRAM uh, componentry, which I don't love, I would prefer Shimano. But in New Zealand, looking at $8,200 New Zealand dollars, all the prices, New Zealand dollars. Which to me, that's only a, a little bit of a jump compared to uh, what I paid for my Propel a few years ago. So that doesn't seem crazy um, when you think about inflation and that sort of thing. Although, I don't know if this is a mistake on the giant website, but for some reason the extra large is $99,999. All the other sizes are $8,199. So then I started looking around at other bikes. What else is on the market? And of course, I went to the most expensive, which is the latest Pinarello Dogma F uh, with a Dura-Ace group set, available in New Zealand with a price of $27,500. I don't even think I've spent that much money on a car. Now, this just blows my mind. Pinarello, yes, you get the fancy name brand, Probably a little Italian flag uh, stuck to the paint somewhere. But I am very confident that these frames are not made in Italy. Probably made somewhere far closer to New Zealand. A little Italian province in Asia, most likely. $27,500. Now, I haven't ridden a Pinarello before or seen too many. But there was a guy recently on Tour Samoa with a Pinarello and he had one that he had to take back to the shop because the rear wheel wouldn't sit straight in the frame. It had been poorly manufactured, somehow got through QC and the back wheel was on the piss. So he took it back. The local dealer had given him a loan dogma for the tour, brand new, straight off the shop floor. And every afternoon during the tour, he had to go back to the mechanic to get his rear brake caliper adjusted 
because when the bike was made or assembled, and I don't know if this is a factory thing or a shop thing, where the rear brake bolted onto the frame hadn't been faced. Now that's for a, for a mechanic, for a factory, that is something that's so simple and, and should be done. And for a $27,500 bike, why the hell would they not do that? You should not have to take a bike like that to a mechanic on a daily basis because the brakes are rubbing, because a simple step in manufacturing hasn't been followed. So that just blew my mind. The other thing thinking now is I look at the new Giant Propel at $8,000 and I know that it's a better bike than the Giant Propel I have. And it's actually gone really well on the World Tour stage. The Jayco Alula team has been riding that bike. Stage wins, you know, they were right up in the, in the top three of the Tour de France for some of the Tour this year. It's a good bike. It goes great. Is this Pinarello Dogma F really worth almost four times the price? Is it a 3.5 times better bike than the Giant Propel? Because for that money, it should be moonbeams better. But I'm not convinced that it is. Let me know. Let's carry on. Now we get to everyone's favorite, the S-Works Tarmac SL8, coming out of the specialized hype factory. SL7 came out, everyone was like, I'm getting rid of my SL6, I want an SL7. The SL8's come out, it looks just like the SL7, but everyone's getting rid of their SL7s to get an SL8. It's like every new bike, 12% better here, stiffer here, softer here, faster here. For a Tarmac SL8 with Durace Di2 in New Zealand, $21,900. Again, that is that is just crazy money. Now I don't I don't know anyone with this bike. I haven't seen one in the flesh actually. But is it really worth that much money? I, I think all the value is in that that S Works label on there. Because the same bike in the specialized, which apparently is a lower grade carbon. It's so much cheaper, considerably cheaper. You pay a whole lot more for that S-Works sticker. 21, almost $22,000. So that's almost three times as much as a Propel. Is it a bike that's nearly three times better? I don't know. Next, we've got the Trek Madone SLR9, which is very uh, different looking bike compared to what else is on the market. Well, you know, with UCI rules, everyone tends to sort of fit inside the, the triangles. But tr this uh, latest generation Trek Madone's really gone outside the box with the cutaway under the seat tube to make it more compliant. So it's, it's one of those uh, like it or hate it kind of designs. Some people love it, some people don't. But $20,699. Again, big money. I recently had got a chance to have a look at the SL model, not the SLR, which is made with a, what they say is a lower grade carbon. But there you're looking at, I think it was $13,000 or thirteen triple nine. To me, that's a much more palatable price point. And I, I really want to know for, for the average rider who is paying for a bike, I'm excluding pros from this because they don't have to pay for bikes. Could the average rider hop on this bike, then hop on the SL, which has a different grade of carbon, and tell the difference in a blind test? I would guess not. But people still happy to spend this $20,000. Then we've got the Cervelo S5. Now, if I was going to buy a new bike, this would be my pick. I'd have my Cervelo TT bike, which it's a few years old now, but I really love it. Awesome bike to ride. And when I look at the S5, I think it's a stunning looking bike. It just looks fast. And you can't deny its pedigree in the world tours. Um, Jonas, Primos, Sepkus, all stage and grand tour winners on this bike for multiple seasons. Same with like Mariana Voss on the Jumbo Visma women's team. This is just an incredible bike, $20,000. This would be my pick over the S-Works 
SL8 and the Pinarello Dogma F. And I'd actually get some change. Not that I have $20,000 to spend on a bike right now, but I would love to take one of these for a spin. It looks like an incredible bike. I love the design. And if money was no object, I would sell my Propel and buy one of these. Even if I had 50 grand to spend, I would buy this over the Pinarello. Beautiful looking bike. Then coming back, we've got the Cannondale Super 6 Evo. And again, not a bike I've ridden and a bike we don't see that many of in New Zealand. But I have talked to people who have ridden this bike and they really rate it. And we're now looking at 17 triple nine. So underneath that 20K mark. So again, nearly $18,000 is still a ton of money to spend on a bike. But we're slowly coming down. I've been, I've been desensitized by looking at 20K plus bikes. Suddenly 17 triple nine doesn't seem that bad. It's a cool looking bike. Then we've got Canyon, which is a brand that doesn't have any retail presence in New Zealand. I don't know if they have much of a retail presence globally. Um, they just sell online, ship it to your door. And they tend to be at a more competitive price point. Maybe that's because it, the bike's not going through the hands of a distributor or a, a retailer and having a whole lot of people clipping the ticket on the way. So they're top level uh, Erode CFR MVDP, which I think is Matthew Vanderpool, 17299 for a full aero road bike with a full Durace group set and Durace wheels. Slick looking bike. And so far, aside from the Propel, unless you want an extra large, this is the best price point I've seen so far. Now, I'd love to know in the comments what pricing is like wherever in the world you are. One thing we saw in New Zealand, we, we had such a long lockdown isolation period um, during the coronavirus pandemic that the bike market went silly because everyone wasn't traveling, stuck at home. They went and bought bikes. And it was during that time that we saw bike prices really, really start to ramp up. And now they've just stayed up high. But people don't have the money now that they had back during the pandemic because people are back traveling, spending money on other things, moving house, inflation's gone up, groceries are super expensive now, but the pricing stayed there. So I'm really keen to know what, what this pricing is like everywhere else. Has it gone silly in the rest of the world like it has here? I think it's gone silly anyway. Shelling out 20 plus thousand dollars for a bike Seems mental. That's all for today. Let me know in the comments what you think. Tell me how much a bike costs wherever you live. 